In this part, we will focus on the tropopause. Let's see the vertical temperature distribution in the whole troposphere. The isotropopause occurs at the altitude of 36,000 feet, where the temperature reaches minus 56.5 degrees Celsius. But in the real atmosphere, the height of the tropopause varies. At mean sea level, the average pole temperature is about minus 40 degrees C, whereas at the equator, it is about plus 30 degrees C. The temperature decreases with height up to the tropopause and then becomes relatively constant in the stratosphere. So, at the poles, the temperature will reach its minimum at about 20,000 feet at the tropopause and will then be constant up to the altitude of 65,000 feet. Whereas, at the equator, the temperature continues to decrease up to the higher equatorial tropopause of about 65,000 feet. The consequence is that the equatorial tropopause temperature of about minus 80 degrees C is much colder than the polar one at around minus 50 degrees C. So let's see the consequences for an aircraft that will cross the tropopause in the cruise. For example, at flight level 370, when flying from the poles towards the tropics, the aircraft would be above the tropopause in the stratosphere at a constant temperature of about minus 56 degrees. On passing into the subtropical regions, the aircraft will cross the tropopause and now be flying at a temperature which is colder. The inverse is true when flying from the tropics towards the poles. On crossing the tropopause, the temperature will increase and this will have a detrimental effect on aircraft performance, thrust as well as lift. Ambient air pressure and temperature affect density. If we look at the lift equation, we can see the symbol for density, rho. As warm air is less dense, if all other parameters remain fixed, the lift will be reduced. Also, air density affects engine thrust. For a takeoff at high ambient temperature, the thrust will be decreased. Equally, for a takeoff at a high altitude airport, the thrust will be reduced as well. This is because the air is less dense and there is less mass flow through the engine. Of course, the influence of pressure and temperature are taken into account when we do our aircraft performance calculations. So, back to our aircraft in the cruise. With changing temperature, the thrust would change as well. But again, if we've entered the parameters for temperature and tropopause, this will be taken into account by the FMS.